Uh oh, you know what that means. I'm not done painting yet. things here got a gallon of wax and grease remover now this is solvent based stuff not the water based stuff that I have been using it's um, recommended for base coat in case I want to wipe down my base coat before I get the clear on the water based stuff they don't like you using the water based on the base coats I'm not real sure why but you can use the solvent based stuff everywhere so I'll be um, I'm almost out of the water based stuff so I'll be finishing up with this I got a quart kit of epoxy primer but this time it's white and what I'm going to do with this is two things. One, I'm going to paint my wheels with that after I get the wheels all ready to for paint. And I'm going to do my sealing coat of epoxy primer prior to the base coat in the white to try to help the red pop a little bit. I got another core of medium red because I have been using uh, some of it for the Raptor liner and I don't want to run out in the middle of painting obviously. So I bought another quart just to be safe. And I also got some gray scuff pads. These are a little bit finer than the red stuff. This will be my very final thing that I do prior to putting base coat on. And that's a ham and cheese sandwich. Dinner. I mentioned in the last video that I was looking for something to be able to try to make a sharper edge here. And all I did was just put sandpaper on the corner of the hard block and, and took care of it from that way. It worked out okay. That's, that's going to be good enough. And then I did the driver's side. So that'll get uh, cured up and sanded down. And I had a little bit of pitting. If you remember the repair I did in here to the to the uh, bulkhead there, I had a little bit of pitting. So I just filled that in real quick. Most, the vast majority of that will go away. You can just barely see some little circles in there. That's in the place I expect the polyester filler to stay. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that cure up, like I said. Start blocking that down. And tonight I'm gonna spot prime the places that need it. So where I've got the bare metal back there, uh, over top of this filler here. That's the only places that I'm doing it over here Over on the other side where I repaired that cell. I'll get some spot epoxy primer on that just regular gray stuff and then uh, move on from there Got that done and This little seam here I did and that little guy in there filled in a little bit So that's really much all about it. Oh and on the uh, top of the bulkhead there So I'm going to hit this just with 320 real quick because I want the epoxy primer to try to be able to fill in that those spots and then get it all cleaned up I got a lot of cleaning to do and like I said I'm just gonna go around and spot prime all these spots that have some bare metal poking through two wet coats on that I don't intend on taping anything off except for the uh, the Raptor liner up here and uh, we'll see areas are all prepped and cleaned up wax and grease remover I also did a once over with Dawn flavored water, I guess you could call it, Dawn flavored water, except for the interior, the interior is still uh, nasty, I probably am not going to do that for a while yet, but I'm going to hit all the spots where I put the polyester filler, and then all of the major spots where there's more than an incidental metal uh, poking through, so along this uh, seam here, I'm not going to tape anything else off, we'll see how the overspray goes, hopefully I, I kind of don't regret this, but... I am going to, everything's going to get picked back up at 320, if not 400. I'm not really too worried. Obviously, the major spot is right there, and that'll require some filler work still uh, for that area that I repaired. So that's going to uh, mix up some paint, get, get that inducing, and go from there. All right, got all the spots that I wanted to get on the body. I ended up almost getting an entire single coat on here. And uh, just because I had so much paint, so hopefully that uh, doesn't really matter. I don't think it will. But it, but it looks pretty good. I'm happy with how smooth it, with it's coming out. So this will get hit with 320 again. And then 400 wet. I'll pick up at 320. And then move down the line from there. But for now, the, uh, the body, I think, is essentially done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause the body work on the body and move on to the body work on and the rest of the work on the uh, bonnet. Show you a little close up here of how those areas came in. They came in pretty well. A little too much filler in that spot there. Kind of smoothed it out a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, I like the way that that looks. That filled in pretty nice there. I'll hit this with seam sealer. That's the repair that I just did. And even though this is all kind of beat up and everything in here, there's still some dents and everything, I'm not going to concern myself. One, it's going to be covered. And two, this uh, I had replaced this whole patch under here, and this thing really took a beating while uh, while doing that so I'm uh, I'm happy with the way that it looks 
So that's it for the evening, and I'll see you next time. Sunday the 14th. Today I'm going to work on palm sanding the, uh, the body here. I'm also going to get the inside interior-wise cleaned up, get all the dust and everything out of here, wet that down with some um, just water and Dawn, get that all cleaned up so it's not so nasty in the back here and in the boot probably because that's nasty and dusty back in there too. Get that paper off of there and get that redone. And then go to 400 grit wet and probably stop there. I don't think... Uh, I don't think I'm going to have any problems. I did a once over on some of the paint. There's some mistakes or some artifacts or whatever you want to call it. I don't know if you can really see that, but the little dots there. Uh, unfortunately, I think that might be water because the uh, I'd used that compressor quite a bit before I painted, and I think uh, I think it was pretty still pretty humid in here. I'm going to have to run the air conditioner and try to dry out the air a little bit. So I'll have that uh, that problem also when I'm palm sanding. And I've got some issues in here where I didn't really sand good enough. So hopefully I'll be able to get into that. Obviously I'm not going to get the palm sander in there. So i got to take some, uh, some sandpaper and get in there a little bit better. But otherwise, uh, moving down the line towards, uh, towards paint. Body's been sanded with the orbital down to 320 except for the spots like in here where I just couldn't get to. I'll, I'll hit them with a soft block. And uh, one thing I totally forgot was I still have to body fill this spot down here that I repaired and seam seal it. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of putting some regular rage filler on that the Evercoat rage and then get that blocked out smoothed up and getting that ready for uh, epoxy got this area filled and then just a little bit of polyester filler over top of that just to try to smooth that transition a little bit it's actually pretty flat now so uh, getting that blocked out and finished up got the body work done here nice and fared in smoothed up now what I'm going to do is fill this seam up with some seam sealer. So we've got a couple different kinds here. I've showed you these before. This is the brushable seam sealer by Evercoat. I use that major the, the majority uh, around the car on all my spots. And I also have this Dynatron seam sealer, obviously in a caulking tube. I like this stuff. It works pretty well. I tried some, uh, some other company. I can't remember now. It might have been 3M. Uh, didn't really like that stuff as much as I like this and this is a little bit more inexpensive though not cheap and I also recommend if you're going to do this you get a you get a halfway decent caulking gun this thing sorry that I'm kind of close to the camera here but this thing is is a little bit of a beast not the typical ones that you would find at Walmart for two or three bucks uh, it wasn't incredibly cheap but it definitely is uh, pretty stout and doesn't flex and bend at all and it, it's very nice and smooth and, and, and I recommend something similar to this. You can get them a lot more expensive. This one is by Newborn Brothers, it's called. So I'll, I'll uh, put a link in the description, I guess, so you can see I got it from Amazon, of course. So one of my viewers had pointed out and gave a, a, a recommendation. So thank you, Eric. I'm going to take advantage of that right now. Better work. Uh, put tape on either side and then fill it with seam sealer and use the tape as kind of a, a boundary for the seam sealer. And uh, I got some acetone here, which will tend to help break down that seam sealer. As a matter of fact, the directions for them say if you want a little bit more working time, you can dip the brush if you're using the paintable stuff in the acetone, and it tends to loosen it up. It gives it a little bit more time to cure. Uh, so I'm going to tape off that area. I've got that one big gap that's up here still. I'll use to get the caulking gun in to kind of jam that into there and then I think I'm going to do brushable everywhere else and then just take my finger with the acetone and kind of smooth it in and then I don't want however to fill that seam up to make it flat and flush I want to I want to still be able to see see the seam but you're going to kind of see it with seam sealer not a, an actual metal to metal gap here I also had a, a couple people recommend the use of lead and, and melting some lead to, to help me fill in that gap and all that when I was having the problems and, and fill in the weld with weld buildup. And lead, lead, I've never used lead. Kind of scares me a little bit. Seems a little bit like a black art. You know, I think my grandfather probably knew how to use lead. But uh, definitely, you know, it could, could have been something that I wanted to do there. But I wasn't, uh, I didn't even really think about it because, like I said, it scares me. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and take this area off. I've kind of cleaned it up already with a little bit of... Uh, 
wax and grease remover just to kind of get the, the major dust out of there and blew it down a little bit just to get the, the dustiness out of there so I don't trap that in there and uh, we'll tape it off and see how this works. Like I said, Eric, better work. Got the caulk gun loaded here and again I'm going to use the caulk just into this you can see I do have a hole that goes all the way into the into the uh, area between the sills so I don't want water to get in there if I can help it obviously so I'm going to get that and use the advantage of being able to get some pressure behind the caulking gun to fill that in all right well that didn't work unfortunately the uh, even though I can put the little cleaner in there I can't get any caulk out of this and it's backing up through the back of the tube and making an absolute mess so I guess I'm gonna have to stick with the regular seam sealer stuff that's the only thing I did find this with the other tube too is if you don't uh, it doesn't it doesn't keep really well over time so if you don't use it and get most of your seam sealer done with these caulking tubes it's it's almost a waste of money so the brushable stuff you obviously don't have that problem I got a little flathead screwdriver here. I'm gonna put that in the brushable seam sealer and just kind of try to dip it down in there to give me a little bit more oomph because I don't think the acid brush will give me that much help. All right, so there's that. So now I'm just gonna take the acid brush with the brushable stuff and just run it all up and down that seam get a little bit of um, acetone on my finger and smooth it out Alright, so got that. Now I would not, I don't save the acid brushes and try to clean them after I do that, so just FYI. Alright, so we got that. We'll peel it off and hopefully it works. Alright, I think that came out real well. I might even do that on the other side. Good job, Eric. At the driver's side rear wing here, I'm going to go ahead and start DAN with 400 grit sandpaper wet. Believe it or not, I have never wet sanded before in my life, so this will be new for me. I got a bucket or just a rag in it, a little bit of water, spray bottle with water, and a, uh, a little bit of Dawn in there. So what I'm going to do, take the, got my uh, 3M sander here. Whoop. I'm going to drop the bottle and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to spray the sandpaper, spray what I intend to sand, and essentially just go at it.
shame on me, I guess. I didn't, uh, I thought I did, but I guess I didn't verify that these were wet and dry discs. So you can see here that the backing is peeling away from the sanding disc. So, I mean, it's, it's staying on the, staying on there and it, it'll be functional, but at the edges where the water comes in, this stuff's just peeling right off, so, yeah. Anyway, it seemed to go okay. It's like a mud, almost, that this, this stuff makes, if I can zoom in here and show you. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. But you can kind of see the swirls in there, and that's like a, like a mud. So now, I'll go ahead and just wipe this down with that rag, and, and see what I'm looking at. Well, it's pretty smooth, that's for sure. The paint that I'm going to put down, that SPI Medium Red, is... I've read several times on their form that it's fine for covering 400 grit scratches. So I think that's uh, that's where I'm at, is, is the 400 grit scratches. I will say, like, up in here on this seam, right on that corner, and then a little bit in here, a little bit in the arches, that's not quite smooth enough yet. And obviously, I can't get in there with a block, and I'm afraid to kind of get in there with the DA sander, the palm sander, because I don't want to spend too much time in one spot and, and tend to make it unflatten out. So I'll go and get some, uh, some fine sandpaper and just use my, my fingertips and, and get into those spots. But I think, uh, I think we're definitely moving along in the right direction. A couple incidental spots of bare metal, which I will get when I cover it the final time in epoxy for uh, my sealing coat. So I'm not too worried about the bare metal that I have here showing, and I expect it to probably be similar throughout the rest of the uh, of the body so it's about uh, one o'clock or so not uh, not too bad for accomplishment stuff today so I'm gonna get some sandpaper together and see if I can sand these out any better than that and try to do the 320 and the 400 stuff and go from there all right, I'm gonna stop with the wet sanding I didn't do anything further at all including the hand sanding spots on the on the creases and the reason for that is because I did clean up the inside of the car here and I, I just took kind of a, a real quick scotch bright pad to it and everything. And it's, it's rough, like a real, real light sandpaper. And it's just from all the overspray and everything, since I didn't really tape and cover the inside of the car. And in hindsight, I kind of regret that, because I will have to paint some of this. And I don't want it to look terrible. But the other side, or the flip side of that, is i got to get the bonnet in here and get the bonnet painted. A couple times at least. So I don't want any potential overspray to settle out on the car and essentially waste my time with blocking it or where we're sanding it out now and then have to come back and do it again. So I'm going to just turn the, turn the body here 180 degrees, shove it as far back into the booth here as I can, and I am going to cover it, but give me room to work on the bonnet. And then uh, when, when the bonnet's at that point where that's ready to be sanded out, then I'll, I'll just worry about wet sanding them all at that time. So as you can see, I got the bonnet back on the sawhorse. So I'll be painting the inside here with epoxy primer, not today. And the body is over here in the corner. I've also got to shoot that spot that I just got done fillering. Got to get that in epoxy primer as well. But uh, next up, we'll be concentrating on the bonnet here, especially the inside. And that'll, that'll take, uh, take a couple visits, I'm sure. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a comment below, tell me what you think. Moving a little bit closer, slowly but surely down the path on the way to paint. Right now I'm taking a 240Z fender that was in pretty bad shape. Took it to bare metal in a, in a certain spot and I'm going to bring it all the way through base coat, clear coat, kind of a proof of process, make sure that I know what I'm doing before I actually lay down some red on Dorothy. So thanks so much for watching, have a good rest of your weekend. Cheers.